How difficult was it for you to approach Coach Landry and tell him that you were ready to hang up the cleats and that you were going to transition into the oil and gas industry? Well, um, it was uh, more, very, very, very difficult for me. Um, you know, I, I knew the thing that drove me out of football uh, was really my, my, I have an injured neck and I was laid out on the field paralyzed momentarily, which is scary, you know. Um, and uh, I knew, and I, I therefore changed the style of my game uh, and didn't play the way that I had done. I knew that I didn't want to have to play with, you know, I didn't think the game would be any fun playing with, without reckless abandon, which is the way I played it, and uh, in my style. And, and I also had a great opportunity in the energy business with a, really a great friend, Max Williams, who had a company that I mean, allowed me to, U.S. companies, to become successful early out of my career, and I'm so thankful for him. But I know that going to Coach Landry, he, I, he called me to his house. I said, Coach, I need to tell you something. And he said, well, come to my house. We can talk. And I went, wow. went to his house and down into his den, and there was his, all his trophies on his walls and, you know, and his pictures. And, of course, Miss Landry was there. And, and he said, I'm not trying to put any pressure on you, but I'd like for you to stay and play next year. And I said, well, <laughs> you know, I know you're not trying to put any pressure on me. I'm sitting here in your office and your <laughs> den and your house where I've never been, Coach Landry. And uh, but it's uh, you know it's a little pressure on me. And I said, I said, Coach, but I, I you know I've got this great opportunity and I can't, uh, you know, I just can't. I don't think I can do it. And he said, Well, okay. And he said, Well, promise me this or tell me this if you will, because we Charlie Waters. I don't know if his knee is going to hold out for us. And he said, You know, will you stay in shape? And, I, and in case we need you, will you come back? I said, yes, sir. I said, I guarantee you I'll stay in shape, which I did. I lifted weights and I ran and I stayed in real good shape. And, uh, but ironically, at the end of that year, I got a call in the playoffs by, from Gene Stallings. And he said, Cliff, we, are you willing, do you want to come back? We're going to play Atlanta next week. We're shy on defensive backs. We might need you to come in and if we need you, we can call on you to come back and play. And he and I said, are you kidding? <laughs> I said, sure I would. He said, well, okay, well, I just want to make sure that you're, you can do that. Well, it, as it turned out from some technical reason, and I don't know the reason, uh, they filled it in with some, you know, uh, another player, another rookie that they'd cut or something that would probably have been healthier. But, uh, but it was real interesting that I, you know, and at that time, you know, Coach Landry, you know, uh, was uh, real. He gave me his blessing, you know, and wished me well. You know. What is that one golden nugget that you've taken away from Coach Tom Landry and been able to utilize in the oil and gas industry? Because obviously, as I said earlier, you've had a very successful career and continue to thrive. Well, I think the thing that, that you know, he was a management by objectives coach. He was a businessman. He was an engineer actually and one of the things that we did we established goals we you know I mean you had to have, have a goal that's reasonable obtainable you know and um, you had to have them defined and have you know and so um, so I, I think that the foundation of the things that he taught in football still apply in business you know because you still need to have your goals you need to have the methods that you think uh, the three most important methods to get done that um, and you need to be aware of it and you need to you know be able to look at where you are in your um, in your position so it all related they were all interlinked I mean the, the, the biggest thing that I really try to think to do is try to, to do what he was doing was take these a complicated situation and try to put it in simple terms and I you know I don't think I'm as smart as coach Landry it's, it's a little harder for me to do that but that's what I try to do well and it's one thing you know to write down the goals but it's about execution too you know the oh, will yeah. to win is not nearly as important as the will to prepare to win and it, it's being prepared for those be ready moments correct right and you know uh, I, I think that's kind of a, one of those things that I that I've been able to to do is to 
get after it, you know, and uh, in my life is something I enjoy doing. And, um, you know, and I, I really think with all the things that are going on in today's world, and I've told some, told some of my friends this, that, you know, I'm, who, you're in life for one reason or another and things happen for one reason or another. I, and I believe that with, in faith and all that and that I, that I truly believe that. And, you know, there were times that would, I would have been in a position that I wouldn't have to be as involved in work as, I'm, as I am today because I'm very involved. And, you know, who knows what would happen with me and my brain with the concussions because I've had concussions. What would happen if I didn't actively uh, drive and think and press and strategize and, and uh, work like I do to make uh, my business successful um, that, you know, who knows what would happen the way will you think and, and deteriorate because, uh, um, so it's a blessing in disguise is the way that I look at it. I try to, try to make the best, I've always done this in my life, I've always tried to make the best, the very best of tough situations and because you really don't have an option in life. You know, if you've got a tough situation, you have to face it and face it in the best way you can, the most positive way and with as much energy as you can. That's what I, what's the way I try to approach, approach it and so I am where I am today so I'm trying to approach it with much energy and as enthusiasm as I possibly can. And I have to bring up your dad real quick too because he was a fighter pilot in what, right. World War II, was shot down in the South China Sea right. and survived on a raft for two days. Right. I mean, right. you talk about facing tough situations as yeah. you were just sharing. Yeah, that was, uh, he, was, uh, uh, he, was uh, he was a fighter pilot in a P-38 in the South Pacific. That's, these were, you know, World War II planes and I uh, and uh, was shot down uh, in a Japanese armada was all around him and he paddled to uh, the only American occupied island in the South China Sea or I wouldn't be here today <laughs> you know? but um, um, you know he was definitely uh, you know a role model for me uh, in mental toughness if nothing else in my life my dad was such a um, such a, a strong person uh, that endured and never showed any sign of uh, you know um, anger or you know at least he didn't to me. Only time for a couple more questions, and I wanted to ask you as far as you know we've talked a lot about your father and the inspiration in your life, but what about you know you have three sons? You said two of them have played college football. Uh, how much fun was that to vicariously enjoy the game and not be out there uh, making those big hits and knocking out the opponent? Well, I, they were, you know, I think the number one concern from any parent uh, uh, that plays in the collegiate level of football particularly is not winning or how they perform but their health, you know. I mean, forget that I'm a pro football player. I'm more concerned about them staying healthy than I was anything else, uh, as I, you know. But then, obviously, you're wrapped up in performance, and I, I've told uh, my wife, I would say, you know, I wish that I could have a microphone, and it went directly to their earpiece and their uh, their helmet, so I could say, okay, watch out for the post right now. That looked like a quarterback. <laughs> It would probably, uh, you know, because there were so many times uh, that I could see what I expected was going to happen, and uh, sometimes I was right, sometimes I was wrong, you know. Uh, but it, you know, they wouldn't have listened to me anyway because they, you know, they looked at me and said when they were growing up, and and they all thought they were going to play pro football because they looked at me and said. Pfft, I'm a better athlete than him. You know, I know I can play football. <laughs> As we get ready to close out our interview, I know we got a lot of Dallas Cowboy fans that listen to us on the radio and we'll be checking out this segment. I know they want to get your thoughts and pronostications on the upcoming season. It looks like the Cowboys, you know, secured some great acquisitions that could be real difference makers coming into this year. Are you looking for a much improved team? Well, you know. With I'm, the secondary and the offensive line? Right? Well, I mean, the thing about it is I, I, I get back to that, though, that very basic fundamental that I that won for us 
uh, in those er that era that I played. And it hasn't changed. I mean, you can talk about the speed, the formations, the size of the players, whatever you want to do. But still, the number one thing in life is the passion to win, not the passion to, you know, perform well, get statistics high, be a high-rated quarterback. If you don't win, it doesn't matter. I mean, and I think that with all the things that are coming in, the number one thing that I would say to the Dallas Cowboys, I would say, you know, have a focus. You know, have a focus and a commitment that you are going to win at all costs, not perform for the fans, you know, because the fans are invisible, um, is that have a commitment to, to, I mean, it's time that they step up with the athletes they are, the amount of money they're being paid. The town expects Dallas Cowboys to win. The state expects the Cowboys to win. The United States, at one time, were behind the Dallas Cowboys. They were beginning to lose our glimmer, and we've got to do things. I mean, Tony Romo, it, this is his year, it should be. Uh, he's a talented guy. The, the thing that I would say to him, I don't care about your statistics. I would say win that game and when it counts because the most important part of football and life is winning when it's on the line. Not performing well and making great passes at any other time, but winning when it's on the line. And, you know, the defense is going to have to step up. I mean, you know, I think the Rob Ryan, you know, he put in a new defense last year. It's a blitzing defense. I understand the complications of that, uh, that, that this year is going to have to be a year of performance for him as well because you can't bring in a blitzing defense and put everybody under pressure that they hadn't been in that before. This is going to have a year they're going to be able to maybe get this under control, see it, understand it, know where everybody is because it looked like last year was just Chinese art gallery out there and, you know, running around. I am hope that, that, you know, because I believe a defense carries, a strong defense carries the team to the playoffs. The quarterback is the guy that wins the game when he has to at the last moment. You know, the defense has got to play their role. The quarterback and the offense got to do their role. And when they have to do that role is in the last plays, the last quarter. When the clock ticks down, they've got to be ahead. It's not complicated. It's like it gets back to that Coach Landry deal. Hey, keep it simple. I mean, when there's three seconds left and you're ahead, that's what your goal needs to be. Well, the Dallas Cowboys, of course, open up their season against the Giants. It'll be a lot of fun to watch. And Cliff, we certainly appreciate you stopping by. We it's wish you continued success. Thank you, Alyssa. We look forward to teeing it up next month, okay? Yeah, that's good. Great. Yeah, come on out to the JDRF Golf Tournament, June 25th. That's going to be a fun time. A lot of a lot of reminiscing and um, a lot of uh, smacking the ball around. Join us for more exclusive interviews at our radio website at eradiosports.com or you can email us at info at eradiosports.com. We'll see you again real soon.